Greetings again everyone. Recently, Samyang have launched a new line of camera lenses which they claim have unique features for video shooters who also want to use autofocus. So today I'm presenting a little group test of the Samyang Cine 24mm, 35mm and 75mm T1.9 VAF FE lenses. They're kind of intended to be used as a set, but each lens will cost you about 650 US dollars or about 550 pounds here in the UK. Samyang plan to release two more, a 20mm and a 45mm version, all with the same characteristics. I'd like to thank Samyang's UK distributor for loaning me these three lenses for testing for a couple of weeks, although as usual, this is a totally independent review. Here are some sample images to show you the difference in perspective that all three lenses can offer you. It took me a little while to completely get my head around Samyang's vision for these new lenses. They are not quite cine lenses in the true sense of the word. For example, they suffer from a bit of focus breathing and they don't have quite the same optical quality you'd expect from a traditional, albeit more expensive, cine lens. They also don't have dedicated aperture rings, although it's not impossible that Samyang could one day release a special aperture ring to fit on the front of this lens via the front electronic connector, who knows. Ultimately, these are normal autofocus lenses, but with features that are optimised for video work. Alongside all being the same size and lightweight of 280 grams, along with a similar centre of gravity for homogeneous balance. That's an impressive little achievement from Samyang, which means that swapping them when using a follow focus system or electronic gimbal will be really quick and easy. It's kind of impressive to see them all there, the same size and same weight. They all have the same front filter thread size of 58mm and Samyang say that their colour balance is all calibrated in tune with each other, which seemed to be the case in my testing. Here are some of the lens's features for video making then. Their rubberized focus rings turn smoothly and with a linear response to being turned, making them more appropriate for focus marking and follow focus systems, although there are no hard stops at the ends of the focus range. That focus ring can also be turned on the side to control your aperture, and those aperture changes happen quite nice and smoothly. When shooting in manual focus, the motor responds a little slowly to being turned, but it does get you there correctly on a linear scale. Let's take a look at focus breathing for a moment. The 24mm lens shows only a little breathing as you change focus, as you can see here. The 35mm lens shows quite a lot of breathing, as does the 75mm lens. So obviously that's one thing that's not ideal for a cine lens. The front and sides of each of these lenses have recording indicator lights. They turn green when your camera is turned on and ready, and red when you're recording, which is potentially useful in a multi-camera setup, or just for checking that you really are recording. At the front of the lens, there's also an electronic connector for future accessories. At the time of writing, I don't know what those would be, but Samyang clearly have something or another in mind here. When it comes to autofocus, all three lenses worked quickly, quietly and accurately when autofocusing, and they seem to have no noticeable problems in my tests with tracking subjects. The lenses are dust and splash resistant, with weather sealing gaskets around their rear mounts. The bottom of the lenses are made of plastic, presumably to keep the weight down, but the front is metallic, and I really like the partially obscured red ring in front of the focus ring, it's a nice little aesthetic touch. The lenses come with plastic front lens caps, which fit on quite tightly, but a little uncomfortably. Why not put a little felt lining within them like everyone else? Overall though, the three lenses are quite lightweight, well designed, impressively homogeneous in form factor, and their features may be useful to some video makers. Let's take a look at their image quality now, I'll be testing them on a Sony a7R 3 camera with its 42 megapixel full frame sensor. In-camera corrections are turned on. At T1.9, all three lenses are very sharp in the middle of their images, although the 24mm lens lags behind a little and also shows some purple fringing around contrasting areas. Let's look in the image corners. All three lenses are a little softer in their corners, and the 35 and 75mm lenses lose out on some of their contrast. 
but generally image quality there is still quite acceptable. At T2.8, the 35mm and 75mm image corners are now looking great with much better contrast, but the 24mm lens is still noticeably softer. At T4, there's not much of a difference. At T5.6, the corners on the 24mm lens finally look sharper, and at T8, all three lenses look excellent. Stop down as far as T16, and softness begins to emerge due to the effects of diffraction. So overall, I would say that all three lenses offer plenty of sharpness for 4K video work across their image frame. If you're shooting 8K though, then you should consider stopping down to at least T2.8 for sharp image corners and a little better image quality on a 24mm lens. Ok, let's turn off in-camera corrections and take a look at distortion and vignetting when used on a full frame camera. The 24mm lens shows barrel distortion, the 35mm lens less so. The 75mm lens shows just a little pin cushion distortion. The two wide angle lenses show strong vignetting at T1.9. On the 75mm lens it's a little milder though. Stop down to T2.8 or T4 to see those corners brighten up, but on the wide angle lenses you'll always see some vignetting here, so you'll at least want to use corner shading compensation. Let's see about the three lenses close up image quality now. The 24mm lens can focus down to a very close 19cm, the 35mm lens 29cm and the 75mm lens 69cm, so that is workably close for shots of smaller subjects. At T1.9 all three lenses look softer when shooting close up, with the 35mm lens performing especially badly. Stop down to T2.8 and they get better, although the 35mm lens is still suffering from terrible colour fringing. T4 sees a further improvement, and T5.6 looks lovely and sharp on all three lenses, so you'll definitely want to stop down with all three of them if you're shooting up close, although the 75mm lens was a little sharper than the other two. Now let's see how well each of them work against bright light. All three lenses perform very well here, although the 35 and 75mm lenses see a little flash of flaring when the bright light in question is just off the edge of the image, it's not a big problem though. Let's take a look at the quality of these lenses Bokeh, and honestly they're quite harmonious as a set here, Bokeh always looks quite nice and soft at virtually all distances for all three of the lenses, which is often the case with Samyang optics. Some more difficult backgrounds can exhibit a little outlining though. And finally, related to bokeh comes longitudinal chromatic aberration. At T1.9 it's poor on a 24mm lens, horrifying on a 35 but acceptable on a 75mm lens. At T2.8 there are only very mild improvements. At T4, the image from the 75mm lens is nice and clean, the 24mm lens is still struggling a little though, and amazingly the 35mm lens is still looking dreadful. You have to stop down all the way to T8 for the wide angle lenses to sort themselves out, and some more exacting video makers may find that pretty annoying. Overall, it was quite interesting to test these three lenses out, the three of them are pretty sharp although they do have problems with colour fringing and little niggles with distortion and vignetting. Basically, if you're looking for the same image quality you'd get out of a $10,000 cine lens then you'll be disappointed, but really for many productions these Samyang lenses will be perfectly workable and their extra features will be somewhat useful, particularly if you're someone who uses follow focus systems or especially electronic gimbals. So if that is you, then the lenses are recommendable for their price if you're thinking of getting a set of them to work together. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed this review. I love putting these reviews together, but they are time consuming and sometimes costly, so if you'd like to support this channel and the work that I do, check out my Patreon page in the description, there you'll find all kinds of exclusive content for supporters. Ciao for now.